Because of the coming Gaur Purnima, the full moon, night, in this month of Palgun, in which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, I've selected some topics for our evening discussions related to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and I selected one for tonight that has something to do with Madhavendra Puri. Mm. Because today is also an important day in relation to Madhavendra Puri. What is it? Madhavendra Puri's disappearance day. So we'll be speaking something about Madhavendra Puri in relation to Nimai Pandit's two initiations, the first of his two. And so it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I have to do this because of the microphone stand isn't working. Just put it up here. Then it's going to tilt even more. Okay. That's life. So much technology in the microphone stand doesn't work. How's that? The Diksha Guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri was from a place not far from Navadweep called Kumarahatta. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, sometime later during his life, made a visit to Kumarahatta and he took some dust from Kumarahatta and kept in a little cloth and little by little each day he took a little of that dust from Kumarahatta. So that started a trend or a fad or a fashion or something. And many, 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 many of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers also took a little dust from Kumarahatta and it got bigger and bigger and finally became a lake. I mean, it became a big hole in the ground and they filled it up and it's now called Doba at Kamarahata. It's one of the celebrated places. By the way, Kamarahata was also the place of origin of Krishna Das Kaviraj. So it's a nice place. It's an auspicious, sacred place, actually. And Ishwara Puri, being the spiritual master of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also received what he was able to give to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from his spiritual master, who was Madhavendra Puri. Many things to say about Madhavendra Puri, but specific in relation to Ishwara Puri was his standard or status as a Paramahamsa sannyasi. Many times I've heard Srila Prabhupada explain Kuti Chak Bahudak Paramahamsa. So when a Brahmana was prepared in his life to become a sannyasi, he would leave home from a grahasta life and live in a little cottage outside the village. And each day, people from the village would bring him alms. That was the first stage. And then the second stage was he would go into the village and perform madukari. And the third stage was he would not just go into Dumadukari, but he would travel Parabrajakacharya, 
Kotichak Bahudak Paribhajakracharya, and he would travel, 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 and wherever he would travel, he would accept alms by the Madhukari method. And then the Paramahamsa, the final stage, is he wouldn't do, he wouldn't do, um, accept alms. He wouldn't approach people during some portion of the day and ask for anything. Rather, if people came to him offering alms, then he would accept. And otherwise, he would fast. So the culture was such at that time that a sannyasi who was qualified sometimes, Madhavindrapuri, would fast for a few days, but without difficulty. So one particular time as he was visiting holy places, because that's one of the activities of a sannyasi, he was visiting in Vrindavan. Now, how many here have been to Vrindavan? Oh, many hands up. So anyone who's been to Vrindavan, for sure and certain, you've been to Govardhan Hill. And if you've been to Govardhan Hill, you'll know where Govindakund is. And that's the tree that you see behind Madhavindrapuri was a tree in the area of today's Govindakund. And it was towards the evening hour and Madhavindrapuri sat beneath this tree in the vicinity of Govindakund and just chanting the holy name absorbed in meditation on the holy name of Krishna. And as he was sitting there absorbed in the holy name of Krishna, a young local cowherd boy who turned out to be Krishna came and approached him and said, my dear sir, whoops, my dear sir, uh, the ladies in the village sent me to bring you this pot of milk because in our village there's a policy, no one goes hungry. And he said, how did you know I was fasting? He said, because you were sitting here silently and here's the pot of milk and later I'll come back to pick up the pot of milk. I have to go now, it's milking time for the cow. Madhavindrapuri is the Paramahamsa Vaishnav. Seeing this young boy, very beautiful, smiling, his thoughts were absorbed in the beautiful features of this young boy, and as he was drinking the milk, he was feeling ecstasy. And then he started to understand this wasn't just a little boy, this was Krishna. And I didn't even recognize him. So he felt in, he felt ecstasy and sad at the same time. But he finished the milk, waiting for the little boy to come back. The little boy didn't come back. But as in the evening, as he was dozing, he had a dream. And in his dream, the little boy came. He didn't ask him for the pot of milk. He said, I'm that same boy that came during the day, and my name is Gopal. And many years ago, because of fear of safety of my deity form, my deity form of Gopal was placed in, in a hidden place along the side of Govardhan Hill. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for you to come so that you could begin my worship. Here's where I am, such and such place. Get some local people to help you find me in the morning. And in the morning, you can please begin my worship. The dream broke. He woke. He was waiting for the sun to rise. He asked some local people, you know the story, exactly where 
it was told in his dream that the deity of Gopal was to be found. Sure enough, Gopal was found. And there's an elaborate description of the worship that he established of Gopal along on the side of Govardhan Hill. And many, many other things happened. But that's Madhavendra, one of the main contributions of Madhavendra Puri is the revelation that Krishna came and gave him milk. Later, Krishna gave him kheer at Ramona. But a very intimate relationship with Krishna. And in addition to this worship of Gopal, especially in relation to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this important uh, f- statement is found in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sri Madhavendra Puri is a desire tree of devotional service, and it is in him that the seed of devotional service fir- first fructified. Now, the, the seed of devotional service was not new because Madhavendra Puri is in disciplic succession. He's in disciplic succession of Madhvacharya, as our line is known. Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya. Because Madhvacharya had many, many followers and he was initiated in the line of Madhvacharya. But any of you who have been to Udupi, you'll know Udupi is just standing and being worshipped without Radha. Correct? Udupi Krishna. And in the line, that's how worship was done. Just worshipping Krishna. And in the mood of Madhavendra Puri, he was worshipping Krishna in the mood of Radha in love and separation, much like, or the seed of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's love for Krishna in the mood of Radharani, the seed of that was from Madhavendra Puri. I mean, Krishna is independent, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is independent, he doesn't need anything. But in disciplic line, Madhavendra Puri was the, the seed or the innovator or the transforming agent from worshipping Krishna to worshipping Krishna as in the mood of the residents of Vrindavan and even specifically in the mood of the gopis towards Krishna. In the later stages of his life, along with chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, there's a particular verse that he recited. Those of you that can see the verse can recite it with me. Aidina Dayadranata He Maturanata Kadavalokya se Ridayam twad aloka kataram Dayata brahmyati kim karom yaham And just like a, a mantra, this is a stotra or prayer, he would say it again and say it again and say it again and taste its mood again and again, and just become completely immersed in the mood of this prayer. Oh, my Lord, oh, most merciful Master, oh, Master of Mathura, when shall I see you again? Because of not seeing you, my agitated heart has become unsteady. Oh, most beloved one, like the mood of the gopis. Oh, most beloved one, what shall I do now? Kim karom yaham. What shall I do now? And he would say it again and say it again. And he was immersed in the mood of the gopis' feelings of love and separation from Krishna. When will I see you again? My agitated heart has become unsteady. What shall I do now? And that mood was passed on to his disciple, Ishwarapuri. Chaitanya Charitamrita writes, 
the seed of devotional service next, fructified in the form of Sri Ishwarapuri, and then the gardener himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, became the main trunk of the tree of devotional service. So the seed fructified and became a tree. Madhavendra Puri, Ishwar Puri, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as we find in Chaitanya Charitamrita, as that tree of love of the residents of Vrindavan for Krishna in the mood of separation grew and grew and grew. There were many fruits and he was very busy distributing the fruits and he, was, he couldn't distribute the fruits fast enough and so he requested others to assist him and that's the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's a nice description in Antilila of Chaitanya Charitamrita of how Madhavendra Puri gave his blessing to Ishwara Puri because of his mood of serving his guru to the very end. Here's what it's written. At the last stage of his life, Sri Madhavendra Puri became an invalid and was completely unable to move. And Ishwara Puri so completely engaged himself in his service that he personally cleaned up his stool and urine, always chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and reminding Sri Madhavendra Puri about the pastimes of Lord Krishna in the last stage of his life. Ishwara Puri gave the best service among his disciples. Thus Madhavendra Puri, being very pleased with him, blessed him, saying, my dear boy, I can only pray to Krishna <clears throat> that he will be pleased with you. From Madhavendra Puri, that's everything. Thus, Ishwar Puri, by the grace of his spiritual master, Sri Madhavendra Puri, became a great devotee in the ocean of love of Godhead. So, tree the seed and tree and the trunk and the distribution of the fruits, starting from Madhavendra Puri. From that time onward, Sri Ishwara Puri became an ocean of love for Krishna. So that we find is a kind of introduction to Ishwara Puri before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met Ishwara Puri. And in the course of Madhavendra Puri's service, as he worshipped Gopal for some time, the same cowherd boy appeared in his dream and said, I have another service for you. In the summers in Vrindavan, it becomes very hot. And so the service I'd like for, from you is that you bring camphor and sandalwood he didn't say he had to go to Puri, but he went to Puri to get camphor and sandalwood. There must have been a supply place there or something. So in the course of his going to Puri, those of you that know the geography of India a little bit, to go from Vrindavan to Puri doesn't mean going, going direct east, but he went direct east. And he stopped in Shantipur. And when he stopped in Shantipur, Madhavendra Puri and Advaita Acharya, who lived in Shantipur, became very ecstatically involved with one another. He, Madhavendra Puri, gave mantra diksha also to Advaita Acharya and then continued on his travels, etc. So that means Ishwara Puri and Advaita Acharya were god brothers. And Madhavendra Puri was their spiritual master. There were others. So when Ishwara Puri, in the course of his doing what his spiritual master did, he went from holy place to holy place. And one of the holy places he went was going to Navadweep. And he happened to meet Advaita Chari and Shantipur. And they uh, 
in Advaita Charya's place in Shantipur, there's a nice painting of he and, and, and Ishwara Puri together. And after some time stay, being in ecstasy with Advaita Charya, he went to Navadweep. When he went to Navadweep, one of the persons who became first attracted to him was Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit, by age, was nearly the same age as Nimai Pandit. And uh, his disposition in that stage of their life was very different. He was very renounced, very devoted. And Nimai Pandit, as you know, during his childhood, he was highly scholarly, filled with debates, and not exhibiting symptoms of a great Vaishnav. He was a great scholar and grammarian. So as time passed, Ishwara Puri would meet every day with some young residents in Navadweep. One principal one was Gadadhar, because Gadadhar had profound attraction for Krishna. And so did Ishwara Puri, and so it was a good match. And very renounced, and it was a good match. And one time, when Gadadhar Pandit was passing by the Ganges with Ishwara Puri, Ishwara Puri saw a nice gathering of young students underneath a tree by the side of the Ganges. And he asked, who's that? He has so many students. He said, though, that's Nimai Pandit. Oh, I've heard his name. Could you introduce me? So here's the introduction. And this is a beginning. It sh it's the, the exchanges between Chaitanya to Nimai Pandit and Ishwara Puri indicate important stages in the life of awakening bhakti as part of the Leela. So as you see, he is a young Brahmin boy. He knows culture. So he comes immediately to offer his respect and touch the feet, bow down and touch the feet of Ishwara Puri. And he's introduced by his friend, Gadadhar. And immediately he wants to do the next thing. You know, this is loving exchanges. Bhunkte bojayate chaiva. He invites Ishwara Puri to come to his home where Mother Sashi can prepare a meal and he can take a meal in their home. And it's part of Vedic culture, but this is um, an exchange between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Nimai Pandit, and Ishwara Puri. And according to Chaitanya Bhagwat, Ishwara Puri remained in Navadweep for a few months. doesn't say how many, it just says a few months. And where did he stay? He stayed at the home of Gopinath Acharya. Now, in the course of these discussions on Gora Lila, we're going to find out much more about Gopinath Acharya. But just for now, Gopinath Acharya um, was a Brahmana, and Ishwara Puri stayed at his home, and his home was in Vidyanagara. Vidyanagara. Vidyanagara was the home of Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya before he moved to Puri. We'll hear one evening is all about Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya. So he stayed with, and, and Gopinath Acharya was his brother in law, means Gopinath Acharya was married to Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya's sister, brother in law. So he is elder, but he invited Ishwara Puri to stay at his home, and he stayed for several months. So during these several months, um, he, he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Nimai Pandit, would come and hear from him regularly on the book that he was writing. The book that he was writing was The Characteristics and Qualities of Krishna, Krishna Lilamrita. So Ishwara Puri 
said, I've heard that you're a great grammarian. You're very gifted in grammar in particular. I have a service I'd like to ask. So this is another step in the stages of awakening bhakti. I have some service I would like to ask of you. Could you kindly, hearing the, this book that I'm writing, if you find some grammar mistakes, then you please bring that to my attention. So I, because I want it to be perfect. And I've heard you're very, very skilled. So when you're offered a service like that, what are you going to do? Here's what Nimai Pandit said. Chaitanya Bhagavat. Anyone who finds any fault with a devotee's description of Krishna is a sinner. If a devotee writes a poem, no matter how poorly he does it, it will certainly contain his love for Krishna. A fool says Vishnaya, while the scholar knows the correct form is Vishnave. But Krishna accepts the sentiment in either case. If anyone sees a fault in this, the fault is his, for Krishna is pleased with anything the pure devotee says. You too describe the Lord with words of love. So what arrogant person would dare criticize anything that you have written? Ishwar Puri didn't take no for an answer. He was insisting and insisting. And so, in principle at least, saying I'm not going to find any fault because you're a faultless person, he agreed. So every day, at least an hour or two, together they would discuss, he would read and discuss the topics of his book, Krishna Lila Mrita, and various other subjects. So one day, in a playful manner, after hearing a particular verse from Ishwara Puri's book, he, he made a suggestion to modify something. The verb in this verse should be parasmai padi instead of atmane padi. And Ishwara Puri said, let me consider next day he gave his reply some days later Ishwar Puri said the verb that you have not accepted as Atmane Padi I've accepted as Atmane Padi now those of you that know the childhood pastimes of Nimai Pandit he was a feisty young boy but it wasn't, you know, wrestling and sports. It was debate. You know this, right? So, for example, it said he would confront somebody, anybody, especially his friends, and he would say, I'm going to make a statement and I'd like you to refute it. And he would make the statement and his friends would say, I can't refute your statement. It's correct. And then Nimai would refute his statement and establish the correct statement. And it would challenge, no, correct, let's find the mistake in, the, in this other statement. There's no mistake in this other statement. He'd refute the second statement and revert back and prove the first statement. And, and on and on and on and endlessly. And, and young boys were tired of it. <laughs> Part of the Leela purpose was to show the inconclusiveness of logic. And when we come to Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, we're going to hear a lot about Nyaya, or his expertise in logic. But Mahaprabhu was more, most superlatively expert, showing in purpose that Nyaya is insufficient because there always can be refutation of something that's presented logically and refutation of that that can be presented logically and it's added finitum. It's inconclusive. It's not the way to reach absolute truth. It's inconclusive. Okay. 
Okay. So it was a big deal. Nimai Pandit was defeated. And he was never defeated. He was never defeated. And he was defeated. Means submission. These are steps in the path of awakening bhakti. We don't hear much about Ishwar Puri for quite some time in the whole of the unfolding of Nimai Pandit's pastimes. But we hear about him much later when his father had died and it was one of the procedures for young Brahmin boys to perform shraddha for their father at a particular time and place. So he was making a pilgrimage with some of his students to Gaya, which is one of the main places for performing those rituals. Then another step in the process of awakening bhakti is mentioned. Something like, you know, in Krishna's pastimes, Krishna had a headache and nothing worked. And he said, the only thing that will work is dust from the feet of my devotee. And no one said they would give the feet, dust from their feet, except the gopis. So similar, Mahaprabhu had a fever. And this doctor, that doctor, nothing worked. So then he pronounced the cure. And the cure was drinking the water that had washed the feet of his students because they're brahmanas. And water from the feet of a brahmana would cure his fever. So they were very reluctant, but they couldn't bear to see him in this feverish condition, so they agreed, and his fever broke at once. Another part of that step. Then at the top of the hill, at Gaya, there's a celebrated place where there's the feet footprint, foot marks of Lord Vishnu. Now this is an artist depiction and I didn't, I should have probably gotten an actual photograph of the lotus feet of Vishnu. But when he saw the lotus feet of Vishnu, there were brahmanas there performing rituals and he was swooning in ecstasy seeing the lotus feet of Vishnu. Now remember, up to this point, he's not been particularly strong in Vaishnavism, he's been strong in scholarship, but he's becoming transformed. So on that particular day, after seeing the lotus feet of Vishnu, anyone here been to Gaya? I've not been. Anyone been to Gaya? Yeah. So my understanding is there are many, many places and there's a whole procedure, one by the next and the next and the next one is to, to do to do the, all the rituals for shraddha for one's just departed ancestor or family member. So he did. He normally takes several days. He did it all in one day. And he was fasting that whole day. And at the end of all the rituals, he came back to the place where he was staying and he began to cook. And much to his surprise, he was visited by Ishwar Puri. And so immediately, another step is he um, offered all that he had prepared in his cooking, rice and vegetables and everything, would be for Ishwar Puri. And Ishwar Puri said, well, you've been fasting all day. You've been doing all these rituals. He said, that's all right. You take and I'll cook again. So he cooked again. And Ishwar Puri by now, because they've had several months of association and now he's meeting him again. Nimai Pandit requests Ishwar Puri to very kindly initiate him in sacred mantra. So it's at this place, at Gaya, that this took, this happened. And immediately, immediately after receiving mantra diksha, Nimai was no longer interested in scholarship. That's what the painting is meant to indicate. He left his studies to the side and no interested in it anymore, and his 
ecstatic love for Krishna began to explode. And there's more. He wanted to go to Vrindavan. In the dead of night, he started to go to Vrindavan, left his students behind. They were with him, and he just didn't even tell them where he was going. A voice from the sky said, Not yet. The time will come. Now you should go back and deliver the world by the Krishna Bhakti that you have, and so forth. So that's what he did. So that's the first of his initiations. The only other mention in Chaitanya Charitamrita has to do with two of Ishwara Puri's disciples, Kashishwara Pandit and Govinda, who were, before he departed, Ishwara Puri instructed those two very elevated persons to go and serve his disciple, now Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or Sri Krishna Chaitanya, serve him in Puri. The, the painting that you see here shows Sarvabhava Bhattacharya in the course of what you'll hear the whole evening is about Sarvabhava Bhattacharya, but Sarvabhava Bhattacharya trying to protect Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by instructing him in Vedanta. But in the end, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained Vedanta in a way that the super scholar Sarvabhava Bhattacharya understood this isn't an ordinary person. I've never heard anything like this before. And then after hearing the explanation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of the Atmarama verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, the, he, he understood, you're, you're, you're not a sannyasi. You're not a young sannyasi. You're the personality of Godhead and Lord Chaitanya showed this sadbuja form. There's many things we'll hear. That's what the painting is illustrating. We'll hear more of that pastime. The, the reason for showing this particular slide is later, because Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was so elevated in his learning, when these two disciples of Ishwar Puri arrived in Jagannath Puri, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was unsure what to do. So he asked, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, you're the, you're the best person to ask this question of, what should I do? Because according to etiquette, I shouldn't receive service from a god-brother. I should honor them and, and treat them with great respect and dignity that they deserve. What should I do? So Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said, what you say is correct from the etiquette point of view. However, the order of the spiritual master is very strong and it supersedes anything. And so you should accept. This is the will of your spiritual master. You ac simply accept it. And so he did. He accepted Kashishwara Pandit and Govinda in his personal service, and they played a very important role in his pastimes in, Brinda, in Puri. And that's pretty much the, the explanation of the relationship between the two. There's one last image, and this is a, a deity of Ishwar Puri being worshipped in a temple in Hali Sahara. I don't know where that is. I'm not visited the place, but it's a um, an often photographed Murti of Ishwar Puri. So that's the first of his initiations, Mantra Diksha from Ishwar Puri. And second is his Sannyas initiation from Keshava Bharati, which is a, has its mysteries. We'll discuss them a little bit. Some of you may receive um, Madhavananda's Bindu magazine. Some of you receive that? Anyone here receive that? In his, his latest issue, 
that he has a whole article on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepting sannyas and the mystery of it. We're quoting all over the place. And this is a painting taken from that, the most recent issue of the Bindu magazine. And it's a painting that's a little, I mean, it's kind of out of place because the painting is, is showing Mother Sachi standing up and Vishnu Priya, who's holding on to the arm of her no longer husband because he's taken sannyas. There he is holding his danda. So he didn't meet with her at later. It's not what a sannyasi does after taking sannyas. But that's what the painting is illustrating. And the, the topic that's written in the latest Bindu magazine is why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accept sannyas? And why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accept sannyas from a father of Shankaracharya? Because you know, a loving mother and beloved, beautiful wife, goddess of fortune, literally, wife, how could he, how, why, what was the purpose? Now we have some understanding, but we'll go through the pastime. According to Chaitanya Bhagwat, there were, before he took sannyas, he informed five people. And one of them was Mother Sachi. Lord Nityananda, Gadadhar Pandit, Mukunda Datta, and Chandrasekhar Acharya. And when he informed his mother, she had intuitive sense, because she's his mother, that the, his mood was going in that direction. We'll discuss a little bit another class, the, the childhood pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And she, you know, this, she, she, had, she was in distress, with, without all the details. She was in great distress. She had lost shortly after birth eight daughters they died shortly after birth think about it mothers eight daughters died shortly after birth her her first son that survived was Vishrup and he had accepted sannyas her husband had, was deceased and all she had left was Nimai Pandit, and he's going to go take sannyas. The, you know, the best of mothers was in, in, she was broken, very attached, naturally. And who's, her, who's going to protect her when her son is gone? So that's the, the, move, the move, the question, why did he do this? But he informed her, and he, she tried in her own way to encourage him otherwise, and he tried in his own way to soothe her feelings. On the particular evening that he was, had his plan to leave home, is a very beautiful description, where Haidas Thakur lived down the road a bit, quite a bit actually, and lived in a little cottage that had more holes in the roof than straw for the roof. But on the roof, it's a practice that people will grow pumpkins or gourds. So he brought one and brought it on that very evening for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to, to accept. So he gave the, the pumpkin or the gourd to be cooked with milk and he took the, the prasad and he was preparing to take rest, but he wasn't resting. He was preparing to leave. The description is, the painting shows that, that Ishwara Puri, excuse me, Lakshmi Priya and Mother Sachi were asleep. 
The Chaitanya Bhagavad says, she, Sachi wasn't asleep. She knew she was on the porch and she was crying and crying because she knew he's leaving. And he spoke to her at length, transcendental knowledge. But, you know, transcendental knowledge wasn't going to work. She was attached, but she knew he was going to go and she couldn't stop him. In this Bindu magazine, um, so it, it says specifically in, in Chaitanya Bhagavad, two hours before the sun rose, he left home. And in the morning, Mother Sachi was still there crying and crying and crying. And many persons had, it was their practice. They would, the first thing in the morning, they come to greet Nimai Pandit, their dear friend or whoever the, what their relationship was. But they saw Mother Sachi crying beside herself. She couldn't look at them. She simply said, whatever you find in the house, you can take it and do with it whatever you like. And her mood and her message was such they understood. He left. So there's this sadness and sadness and sadness pervading all this whole section. In the Bindu magazine, this is another painting. Looks like a pretty nice house. But that's what's in the magazine anyways. It's Nimai Pandit leaving. Lakshmi Priya, no, Vishnu Priya. And here's another painting that's taken from this same magazine. She's in great distress because she's young. She's perfectly chaste. She's the goddess of fortune. And he's gone. And she's also feeling beside herself with grief. The place he, he, where he was going to take sannyas was not far from Navadweep. It's a, it's a, some of you may have been, who's been to Katwa? A few, okay. Sometime we'll, we'll go to Katwa together. And the, the crossing, the Ghat, he crossed by boat at the Nadia Ghat to get to Katwa. Here's a um, one of those sculptures that shows he reached Katwa. He's receiving his danda from Keshava Bharati. The barber's behind him ready to chop his hair. And the others all around are in great distress seeing he's going to take sannyas. So Nadia Ghat is the place where the river crossing was. Gives the year. 1510, towards the end of that year, excuse me, to, to the end of January, end of January, and he, just at the very end of his 24th year, because Gorpanima comes after, you know, the, the it, it, it marks when his 25th year would cross. It was just before Gorpanima when he took sannyas. And another very nice painting. Um, the ceremony was performed by Chandrasekhar Acharya. The house of Chandrasekhar Acharya, for those of you who've been to Mayapur, it's the present Chaitanya Godiamat. Chaitanya Godiamat is the place where Bhakti Siddhanta made his headquarters. And there's a place near one of the gates was understood as the house of um, Chandrasekhar Acharya. And there's many things to say about Ch all these personalities, but he was very expert in Brahminical rituals. So he was there. He and four others went with him. And... Um, you see at the bottom, Sandipani Muni. This is from Goragona Deshtapika. Sandipani Muni, who formerly offered the sacred thread to Krishna and Balaram, 
later became Keshava Bharati. According to some authority, other authoritative opinions, Keshava Bharati is an incarnation of Akrura, taken from Gora Goda Deshtapika by Kavi Karnapur. It's like a who's who book. In Gora Lila, who are they in Krishna Lila or outside of Gora Lila? And um, necessary for this process of sannyas diksha was a barber had to cut his hair, shave his head. And the local barber was named Madhu. And Madhu couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He said, I'll, I'll, I'd rather drown myself. Finally, he he performed the act, and you see the nice painting, and there's Keshava Bharati preparing to give him mantra diksha, the sannyas mantra. Here's the tree under which Madhu cut his hair, and inside, very near the tree, is the samadhi of Madhu. Very celebrated personality. And um, there's a very nice description of the giving of the mantra. The nice description of the giving of the mantra when it came to that stage. <coughs> um, Nimai Pandit asked Keshava Bharati, What's the, what's the mantra that you're going to give me? I heard it in a dream. Is this it? Some mendicant came to me in a dream and told me the sannyas mantra. Here's the sannyas mantra. Is this it? And he whispered the mantra in his ear, which means he gave Keshavarti sannyas diksha by whispering the mantra in his ear. And Keshavarti said, there's nothing you do not know. Everything is known to you. Yes, this is the best of all mantras. And that's the mantra by which he was initiated. So now comes the uh, more difficult and, in and interesting question. Why did Nimai Pandit seek sannyas from a Shankaracharya sannyasi? Now, in our modern times, this is like, forget it. Or... In our modern times, you would take mantra diksha sannyas from your diksha guru. So why did he go not only to... Because Ishwar Puri was still present. Why did he just go to Ishwar Puri? Ishwar Puri knew the mantras. He's a Vaishnava. But note that Ishwar Puri also had the surname Puri. And his spiritual master had the surname Puri. Because these, there's ten names, Bharati is one of them, and Puri is another one, and there's eight more, that are the names that are given in the line of Shankaracharya. So here's a, here's, there are different answers, but one of those answers is, during that time in India, Vaishnava sannyas did not have the same respectability that Sanyas and the Shankara line had at, during that particular time. And so he had a mission. And his mission was, as a sannyasi, to have people who were otherwise not understand him or not necessarily respect him get spiritual benefit by holding him with proper respect and regard. So he, he selected in that direction Keshava Bharati for his purposes of his preaching mission. When the um, name was given, here's what's described. Sri Krishna Chaitanya means that you will arouse Krishna consciousness. Probably doesn't say that in Bengal Beng exactly, but consciousness of Krishna or devotion to Krishna 
throughout the entire world. You have descended to make people Krishna conscious. So the most suitable name for you cannot be but Krishna, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Now Sri Krishna Chaitanya is not an ordinary name. It's a brahmachari name, Krishna Chaitanya. It's a brahmachari name. But he wanted a brahmachari name. He didn't go with the, the Bharati surname or the Puri surname or any other surname. It was Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And as after the name was given, and he's now in his saffron robes, you saw that painting where his guru was placing the sannyasa attire. He embraced Keshava Bharati, and both of them in ecstasy began to dance, chanting Krishna's name. And Keshava Bharati joined in the Sankirtan. It's described that he, this was one of the purposes was conversion of the Mayavadis just by his association with them. So as he became a Vaishnav, Keshava Bharati became a Vaishnav through his association with Nimai Pandit, who became Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he also had many followers. And the many followers also became Vaishnavas. It's just the beginning of his mission. The um, the time of this event was Makra Sankranti, before his 25th birthday. And those of you that may visit this place, because not many of you have, here's the altar. There's a, a very large Mahaprabhu deity, and I can say, because I've been there a few times, very powerful deity. You can feel, even I can feel the presence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the deity. And uh, the mudras are benediction giving. Jagannath, not with Subhadra and Balaram, so the Jagannath deity is there. And I don't know I don't know the story behind the other deity. It's a Krishna deity apparently holding a flute, but he's fair complexion. So I was searching to find what's the answer to this. I don't have the answer. Maybe later I'll get the answer. After his sannyas initiation, he was headed for Vrindavan. But he was in such a state of ecstatic madness, he didn't know where he was going. So he was going this way, going that way, Nityananda intercepted him. Mahaprabhu, in a mood of ecstasy, said, which way is Vrindavan? He said, it's that way. He was pointing him to go to Shantipur <laughs> because it was a trick. He wanted Mother Sachi to be able to serve him again for some days before she might not see him again. And so he went to Shantipur and... There's devotees in great sadness, but at the same time, great respect. And he's giving wonderful teachings. Mother Sachi comes to visit him there. That was also arranged. There, she's embracing her son. And he says many things to her about, you know, of a fit of madness, I don't know what I've done. But it's done, so what to do? And, you, you know, she as she said, I know you want to go to Vrindavan. Please don't go to Vrindavan. I may never see you again or hear of you again. Please go to Puri. Krishna is also in Puri. And because the devotees from Bengal go to Puri every year for Rathiyatra, when they come back, I'll get some news of your well-being. And maybe you'll come to take bath in the Ganga at some point in time, and then I can see you again. So now this is a little bit, something happened in this painting. Here's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving his shoes or to Vishnu Priya. Now exactly how that works after he's taken sannyas, it's hard to say. But somehow she got his shoes or sandals or wooden chapels. And there's 
Mother Sachi sitting on the stoop of a, of a house. So Vishnu Priya was the, the daughter of Sanatana Mishra, and she cherished, like anything, these shoes of Mahaprabhu. She was very young when, when this t- took place. According to um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the, the very second verse of the whole Chaitanya Bhagavat reveals that Vishnu Priya is Bhu Shakti, Lakshmi Priya is Sri Shakti, and Navadvip Dham is Nila, so Sri Bhu and Nila, Sri Bhu and Nila are the, the pot- primary potencies of the Supreme Lord. So Navadvip is the Nila Shakti or Lila Shakti or Durga personality. <coughs> According directly in the verse and presented by Bhakti Siddhanta. We're almost done. Here's a a photograph of those shoes. They're now covered with um, silver, and they're on display. And for the rest of her life, she worshipped these shoes, and also a murti of Mahaprabhu. Now, not confirmation, but it is said that the murti was carved from the Neem tree under which Mahaprabhu was born, or Nimai Pandit was born. And somehow it was given by Mahaprabhu to her. So she has her his shoes and this deity form. And it's again and again said she worshipped the deity form for the rest of her life, another 80 years. She lived a long life. And... At the end of her life, she merged into the body of the deity. That's where her disappearance. And if you look closely, you can see a nose ring. It's the, 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 the jewel is by the deity's lip, but it's hanging or suspended from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's nose. Now, this photograph was taken about two weeks ago. There's some devotees that were in Mayapur and visiting places. And the, the Shamsund, the temple president of Houston, sent this to me. Some of you know him because he came and took part in a Japa retreat. The same Shamsundra. So he said, the Pujari said, that three or four days of the week, they dress Mahaprabhu in a sari. And the other days of the week, they dress Mahaprabhu in a dhoti. Indicating that uh, the deity is the place where Lakshmi Priya, no, Vishnu Priya entered. So it's, a, it's in Navadvip town. And when you go to Mayapur, hopefully you'll get a chance to visit It's a very nice place. And I'm looking at the clock and we're just right on time. So this this class, now Nittai Guru Sundar, the um, nine o'clock bell is ringing. Right? But it's 9 o'clock their time. They're in central time. So, I can't, I can't hear you. Huh? They're saying it's Friday. It's okay. It's Friday. It's okay. So, they, but that's the last slide. So now I'm ready, Nitai Sundar, and whoever is with you over there, I'm ready for any discussion that you would like to have. And when you're done, there's a number of people here in this house, and maybe there'll be some discussion over here. The topic, stay on topic, please. The two initiations of Nimai Pandit. I I can't hear you. You're going to have to speak louder or something.
They were they were Nimai Pandit students, and he was. They were accompanying him. They were attached to him, and they were accompanying him to take part in the shraddha for his deceased father, Jagannath Mishra. His students, not a different group. That comes later. The making fun of him comes later, when he started to get not interested in academics and more interested in Krishna Bhakti, they were making fun of him later. It's, it, this class is, is dedicated to your group, so if, if you have, if your group has nothing, I'm going to open up the floor to our visitors here in this home. Okay, so they'll say the question, and as long as I can hear the question, I'll repeat the question so that you all can hear. Comments or questions from the room here? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for the word of class. So I just wanted to know the <clears throat> significance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving uh, mantra to Kesho Bhakti and then receiving it from Kesho Bhakti. That is not generally. Okay. The question was please explain the significance of Nimai Pandit giving the sannyas mantra to his sannyas guru and the sannyas guru in turn giving the same mantra to him that's the question and the answer is it's it's a little esoteric but mahaprabhu was giving initiation to keshava bharati now i don't know the details of all these rituals but apparently there is more than one sannyas mantra because the response that Kesha Bharati gave was, oh, this is the best of all sannyas mantras. And then he spoke it back. Yes, it's authorized and it's the best. So he was acknowledging, but he had been given that sannyas mantra in the ear from Nimai Pandit. That's the significance. He received mantra, and mantra is powerful. And he, you know, he 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 became transformed, of course, by Nimai Pandit's association, but also receiving the mantra from Nimai Pandit. It's like Keshav Bharati Maharaj getting initiated in the line of. Lord yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yes, I see a hand in the back. I hope you have a strong voice. It took a while to gather them all, I tell you. <laughs> Why did he do what? It's Leela. Okay, well, the question... Uh, Nitai Guru Sundar, the question was, since he was planning to take sannyas anyways, why did he marry Vishnu Priya? That's the question. So he's omniscient. He knows what the, where the train is going before he gets on the train. So why did he get married? The, the answer is the, th th several. These are pastimes. And it's a pastime where the personality of Godhead has his principal spiritual potencies. And his principal spiritual potencies are Sri and Bhu. In this case, known as Vishnu, Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya. So he has his potencies and he's 
engage with his potencies. So although he has a pastime that's coming up, taking sannyas, so it's just part of his pastime. There isn't another example that I'm aware of, and for discussions, there isn't another example, but nothing I'm aware of where the personality of Godhead takes sannyas. It, it, there isn't another case. So why does he take sannyas, period? So why does he ex engage with his sorup shakti, his spiritual potency, when his plan is to take sannyas? It's a pastime. Where his mother is feeling intense love and separation, his d beloved wife is feeling intense love and separation. The first of the two wives died in separation when he went to East Bengal. He was gone for some time in his missionary work and she died in separation. So it's a, it's a pastime of the Lord engaging with his own sarup shaktis personified and increasing their feelings of loving affection like Krishna leaving Vrindavan. Similar. Anyone else? Yes? You got to speak a little louder, though. There's people back here. I'll say the question again. Uh, like, um, yeah, like, even a devotee, like, uh, before taking initiation and after taking initiation, he follows the same rules and he follows the same siksha. So, like, how does initiation, like, what is the significance of initiation? Like, so that is... Uh, What's the that, essence of initiation? Ah, uh, yes, Maharaj, because... Because you follow the same. Chaitanya thing. Mahaprabhu or for us? Uh, for us. For I, us. For the us essence especially. of initiation for us is formal connection with the cyclic succession through mantra. There's submission, the essence is submission and acceptance. That's the essence. And with it, mantra. Now, for us, we have already the Hare Krishna mantra. So it's already fully transcendental according to the teachings. It's not dependent upon anything. As Krishna is independent, the name of Krishna is independent, and the mantra is independent. But a formal connection is established through the process of submission and acceptance. So, uh, initiation, he, he will not go to back to Godhead or... Like, like, Why do you say that? Uh, uh, asking like, uh, like formal connection in the sense like if we follow Prabhupada instruction, so like. Then they ask you, w was Haidas Thakur formally initiated, and did he go back to Godhead? He go to back to Godhead. So it's not dependent. At the same time, submission is essential. And it, it's standard. So are there, that's standard. And are there exceptions to the standard? Of course. Way in the back. Go ahead. You have a strong voice. You don't need a microphone. That he met who? You want to know when did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu meet Raghunath Bhatta? That's your question? There's no no indication that I'm aware of. I mean, there may be, but I'm not 
I'm not aware. The, 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 the question, in case those of you in Tennessee didn't hear, there was some travel that Mahaprabhu made where he met Tapar Mishra in East Bengal. Is there any indication that Raghunath Bhatta was there for that first meeting with Tapar Mishra in East Bengal? And the answer I gave is, and I, I'm unaware of any reference like that. So in the way, way in the back, Somebody had a, something. How strong is your voice? Ah, oh, you're good. Okay. Why was West Bengal chosen when we had Vrindavan, where Krishna had said, you know, hmm. or Vrindavan here for the reason? Why was this movement, you know, and the Acharya uh, originated from Bengal? Anybody here Bengali? <laughs> and want to stand up and do the, I'm a Bengali. My understanding is um, not that scholarly. Rather, my understanding is simply devotion and Two things. Uh, Navadweep at that time, Navadweep at that time was a seat of high learning. What happened over time is another thing, but at that time it was a seat of high learning, you know, like Harvard and Princeton and Yale. They're like very special seats of learning. So Navadweep was such a place, you know, for Brahmanas. And so for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <clears throat> to display the pastime of a superlative educator, although grammarian isn't necessarily the highest form of Sanskrit study, that's what he was doing. And it, it was a place where high, high learning was, was part of what Navadweep was, a major part of what Navadweep was. And a second is just intuitive. And the intuitive is Bengalis have a, have a natural soft heart. And um, so it's, it's a suitable place for Krishna Bhakti to, to be received and be spread from West Bengal. And for, for that reason, for that reason, many elevated persons who participated with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took their birth some different, different, different places in West Bengal. Now, that could, your question is, why not Vrindavan? It's a, a little bit like, not the same, but a little bit like when Janava saw what was happening to Gora's teaching and Nityananda's teaching after one, you know, a short period of time after both of them left this world. She contacted Jiva Goswami in the form of a letter and requested, you have many, you've, you've gathered a library can you send those books along with teachers of those books over to this side of the country to revive um, the Krishna Bhakti that Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya had started because it's going down. So, because it's a fertile place, it grew, it manifested and grew but it also something is needed to keep it going. And that was what Janava, Janava wanted. So that's just an, a corollary to the, my response to your question. It takes vigor to bring Krishna Bhakti up, even in a place where there's potential, it still takes vigor to bring Krishna Bhakti up. Puri is another place, of course. 
with you know, a seat where the bhakti is naturally very strong. Yes. Thank you, sir. So just connection to the question that Prabhupada asked from the back. Also, what we hear in a reference, like an environment before the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that people of that particular tribe of land were very much attracted to, like the karma khandas or you know, doing those type of things very much. Mm -hmm. Can it be connected just because people were so much interested, but they were misled to karma khandas? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear back there? You heard? Okay. Nitai Gursundra, I'll repeat. Did you hear? Yes? No? Should I repeat? You heard it. You heard it. Okay. Very good. Yeah, that, I, that's nice. As, although a seed of high learning is a fact, it's because it comes again and again and again, especially in Chaitanya Bhagavad, those persons who were qualified had been misled. Gradually, Kali Yuga deteriorated, and there was much, much, much more interest in Karmakanda rituals and much, much less interest in Krishna Bhakti. So is he's a reformer. So he's reforming the Brahmanas, would-be Brahmanas, back to the, the, the right track and having devotional inclination but needing someone to lead them. So he, there he was, ready to lead them. Okay, so online question, and we'll do one question, and we're going to call it an evening. So this is from Mahi Mataji. Uh, My question is, did Sri Madhavendra Puri and Ishwara Puri have the same understanding of the mercy of Radha and Krishna combined since they were before Lord Chaitanya? Yes, that's the whole idea. The seed and then the tree, and then the main trunk. So yes, the seed, and then the tree, and then the main trunk, producing fruits and flowers. The same understanding, yes. At least that, you know, in, that's, it's not explicitly said like that, but it's implicitly stated right in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So the yes, same understanding. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Maharaj Ki Jai Nandita Gursundar, I can't distribute Mahaprasadam to you. But I'll distribute to the devotees here until I run out. That's our last Maharaj. Another time, okay? A rain check. Thank you, Maharaj.